Take your hand off the remote control. You won't be needing it tonight. WLIW wants you to watch throughout May as we pay tribute to the brave men who fought for their lives during World War II. These soldiers had to learn how to depend on each other. Lloyd, what do we do? They had to socialize with the help. Hey, Mike, they my bulges. And they all had to learn how to spit. But most of all, they had to remember they were all there for the same reason. You want to take out on somebody, take out on the Japs, not yourself while the rest of the world waited for their safe return. God bless America. Tune in as we take you from the home front... Be a good boy and don't fight! Yes. ...to the war front. Holy smoke, Tokyo! I always did want to see one of those geisha gals up close. As WLIW presents World War II Month. Catch a different movie every Monday night at 9, right here on WLIW. Join the crew of the Anna Christina off the coast of Australia in search of the largest and smartest creature in the sea, the whale. Spectacular, never-before-seen footage captures the natural beauty of the humpback and the drama of its struggles to survive. Get ready to set sail for your own Encounters with Whales. Saturday night at 8 on WLIW. Next time on Vanderbilt. I'm interested. Oh, well, this isn't like you. It's not like you either. What is it? Playing at being a crook. I believe you wish to meet me. Don't miss Vanderbilt. Each week, Marion Esposito invites viewers into her kitchen to learn the techniques of cooking Italian food. Well, now she's coming right here to the WLIW studios, where you can join her as she hosts a scrumptious marathon of Chow Italian. Spend an evening with Marianne Esposito, Wednesday, May 26th, beginning at 7.30, live on WLIW. There. Look at that. Look at how wonderful that is. That's about six tablespoons. It's a current Smash Broadway revival. Now, thrilled to the making of the new cast album. As stars Fate Prince, Peter Gallagher, Nathan Lane, and Josie de Guzman go into the studio, and you go behind the scenes. Luck be a lady, luck be a lady, luck be a lady. Guys and Dolls, off the record on great performances. Here's a bite from Newton's apple. Over the years, many birds have disappeared from our skies. The dodo bird, the passenger pigeon, never to be seen again. The California condor might have joined them on the extinction list, except for some unique repopulation efforts by the San Diego and Los Angeles zoos. We sent field reporter Peggy Knapp to Los Angeles to meet Dr. Michael Wallace to find out what the zoo is doing to help these threatened birds. 
Before meeting the elusive California condor, I met with some of his close relatives, the Andean condor from Peru, and his cousin, the infamous black and white king vulture, handled by Mike Wallace. Basically, uh, condors are large vultures, uh, very much the same. They have the um, uh, lack of feathers on the head. This allows them to enter, uh, feed on carcasses uh, with their entire heads inside. Although the vulture gets the bad rap, the Andean and California condors are also scavengers. While they're geographically distant, one in South America and the other in North America, they have much in common. They have the same similar niche, the very similar behaviors. Uh, they look for the same kinds of updrafts that they need to fly in. Uh, they live in the same caves. They hunt the same carrion, uh, forage over similar areas. That's why scientists capture the Andean condor. By studying their lifestyle, they can predict how the California condor will respond in the wild. If we intend to release them back to the wild, we have to do it in a way that they don't see people. They don't associate with, with, with people. They don't realize people are behind the scenes feeding them and, and caring for them. This undercover work takes place at a restricted area known as a condor minium. Inside, video monitors spy on the condor egg as it's being pulled from its nesting box. By pulling the egg as soon as it's laid, researchers may retrieve up to three eggs in one year, whereas in the wild, the females would only lay one egg every two years. Throughout the program, human contact is limited because the young condors may imprint on humans rather than adult condors. How are they raised from a newborn chick without human contact? Back at his office, Mike gave me a complete rundown. What we do is give them an image of, a, of an adult condor. In this case, we use a uh, fake fur uh, with um, this um, fiberglass covered skull of a, um, that was taken from the image of a real condor from a mold. We actually make sure that we're behaving right as, as adult condors. For instance, if there's a loud noise out in the environment, the uh, adult looks up and turns around and behaves like it just heard a noise. The young chicks respond to that noise and say, oh, mom's being careful here. Maybe I should be worried about that noise. And um, the parents are particularly tender, I guess you could say, uh, in their movements around the chick. So instead of having quick movements that aren't appropriate, we've learned to just how to move the, the, the puppet and uh, interact with the chick in a, quote, normal way. Should we be intervening like this and keeping this species alive? In this case, uh, because of changes invoked by people, mankind is changing the face of the earth. We're in effect putting many species into extinction. So uh, it's not, in one sense, a very natural process to have so many species going extinct. And there are lots of us that feel that uh, since we as humans put this bird on the brink of extinction and many other species, we um, have a responsibility to do everything we can to try and retrieve it. The California condor has come about as close to extinction as any species on Earth. In 1987, there were only 27 of these birds left. The first birds of the new generation were released into the wild in January of 1992. The hope is that this release program will buy time so that wild populations can be reestablished. That way, our children and their children can also be inspired by this mythical bird. Newton's Apple is made possible by a grant from 3M and its employees, dedicated to innovative thinking and scientific learning. 3M, innovation working for you. Next on Mystery, Britain's beloved barrister is back. And all's right with the world.
the world. A man who knows the law. I often think that knowledge of the law is a bit of a handicap to a barrister. And his way around it. You know there's a sort of legend going on around the Bailey that old Rumpole gets away with it all the time. Is that a legal proposition, my lord, or a subject for debate? Leo McKern stars as the never predictable, always engaging Rumpole of the Bailey <laughs> on Mystery. It's an ongoing and seldom reported struggle. In 1988, students from Burma fled for their lives after a peaceful protest for democracy led to bloodshed. Over 10,000 students were killed and many imprisoned. The ones who escaped now live in disease-filled jungles waiting for help from the West, but little is done. Follow two brave women from Australia who join these students to record their daily battles for peace as International Dispatch presents the Barefoot Student Army. Thursday night at 9 on WLIW. Fitness czar Covert Bailey is on a mission. If exercise could be packaged into a little pill, it would be the most heavily prescribed medicine in history. So if you eat too much carb, you can get fat. If you eat too much protein, you can get fat. If you eat too much fat, you can get fat. Right? And it all ends up in fat in the bottom, which is symbolic. Do I practice what I preach? What do I preach? Do I preach you should never eat this and never eat that? No, I practice if you exercise, and get fit, you can eat almost what you want. And the truth is, I may be one of the few people who comes along and says, listen, now you're going to get some real help. Covert Bailey's Fitter Fats. It'll make you change 